Okay, in this YouTube video, I'm going to show you how to um, make a gravity simulator um, with the JavaScript code. So let me kind of show you the starting code here. It just kind of has a ball going down and bouncing off the wall here. Not much to look at, um, but we'll quickly add some code that's going to change all that. So uh, the thing to look at here is uh, we have a JavaScript canvas, which I will give you all the code that you see here. Um, uh, it's a typical JavaScript canvas that is actually just the width of whatever your browser screen is. Um, that's all set down at the bottom of the screen here. Um, but the, the code that really makes the, the ball move and everything are um, is at the top of the screen. and. So we have a velocity for the x-axis for our ball um, that we start at 5. We have a velocity for the y-axis that is going to be randomly generated. Um, actually, I'm starting it at 7, but I will change it to a randomly generated um, velocity. And then I'm going to have a gravity variable that's uh, 0.5, a bounce variable that's 0.7, and a friction for the x-axis. Of course, these two affect the y-axis, right? Um, and so my ball is an object that starts at the middle of the screen, canvas um, dot width minus two, and the y is 100, um, and then its uh, radius is 20. Um, the status, we're not even using that. The color, though, is red. Um, and we do a typical draw to the screen where you uh, clear the screen, um, I have a message that's what says gravity simulator, right? Um, and then uh, we draw our ball, which is a circle, which you draw in JavaScript with an arc. Um, you get your X and your Y value and your radius. Um, and then we just give it the fill color, which is red. And then most of our action though is happening in this ball movement method, our function. And so here's where you have it. Um, the x and y velocity is affecting the um, x and y values for the um, position on the screen of the ball. And I have it bouncing this if statement, make sure that the x-axis bounces off the wall. When it hits the wall, it will change direction by timesing the x velocity by negative one. Um, then we have a similar thing happening when it hits the floor. Um, we want the y-axis to change um, I'm not doing anything with that yet, so I'm going to uncomment out. First of all, I have this little repositioning so that the ball doesn't uh, actually go below the floor, the, so it looks more natural. But now I'm going to add this little bounce variable um, to the uh, y velocity. And so I, when I times that, if I if you save it here, you should see that it should now um, bounce off the bottom up, but I don't have anything, I'm not applying uh, velocity, I mean, I'm not applying um, gravity, so I need to do that as well, and I have that um, right here, I'll uncomment that, and so now you see it bounces and comes back down, because gravity is um, being applied. And it should eventually stop, but it's not going to stop on the x-axis because I didn't apply my friction. And I'll show you that. So let me just go through this though a little more. So um, we have this gravity variable affecting the y-axis, right? That is um, uh, pulling it down to the to the ground. Um, and then every time that it hits the ground, um, we are applying this bounce variable that kind of shoots it back up. But it, the, um, that's going to slowly um, become less and less on the, uh, on the, the y velocity. And this here is put in because uh, if you don't have that in, it never stops bouncing. There's always like a little bounce that it'll do. And so this kind of, um, I had to tweak this a little bit and figure out that when it was in between those variables, it was pretty much done bouncing. And so it was safe to apply that. Um, and I did the same thing on the x-axis in here. Let me uncomment out this xf is for x friction. And this basically um, adds our, uh, subtracts our friction value 
from our velocity when the velocity is greater than zero, and then when it's going to the left of the screen, when it's less than zero, we add it to it to kind of slow the ball down. And so now everything working together, this is all the code. Um, you can see that we got it bouncing nice. We got gravity being applied. Um, it's harder to see the X friction, but it does work and it should stop the ball slowly. Uh, right there, there you go. Um, and so the, uh, actually I'm not applying, If I, it should actually be about the same each time because I don't have the uh, um, randomness to it. But if I go back up here and I change this to random, which is more interesting to look at because you can see how it can affect it in, uh, with different speeds on the, this is the Y velocity is being randomly generated. Um, and so based on that, it will bounce longer or shorter. So that time it bounced off this side of the screen where it hadn't before. Um, it should slowly slow down to zero here. Um, yeah, there you go. Let's see, this was even a higher one. Whoop, shot off the screen. Um, the, uh, the rate is a little slow due to my video, uh, screen casting here is affecting my processor. And you see it nice and smoothly comes to a stop there. Um, so I hope you like that. It's a, this can be applied to many different games. Um, and it's just a fun, uh, little bit of code to play around with.